Panther Scholars, and welcome to our introduction to the Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, we talked about this in class, but I wanted to put these notes onto a video so that uh, anyone who is absent, or if you wanted to review the notes again, of course, you can go on to uh, the Haiku page and view these notes and um, you know review them as many times as you want. So uh, there you go. Anyway, uh, we talked about this. Nathaniel Hawthorne was, of course, born in 1804. He was born in Salem, Massachusetts. Now, I asked you a question in class. I said, who knows what happened in Salem, Massachusetts? And in every single period, in every single class, there was someone who raised their hand and said, well, the Salem witch trials, right? The Salem witch trials, the infamous Salem witch trials that occurred in um, the 1600s, 17th century. Uh, did in fact occur in Salem, Massachusetts. Now there's a connection there, and if you recall, I talked about how Nathaniel Hawthorne's great grandfather, his ancestor, was Judge Hathorne. Judge Hathorne, no W. Judge Hathorne of the famous, of the infamous Salem witch trials. And he put, uh, he condemned people to death. He condemned 19 people to death. Um, executed them by, um, by um, hanging, and they were, in fact, innocent people. Of course, there are no witches. And even if you believed in that, you have the First Amendment to protect you in freedom of speech, freedom of religion, um, and, um, and separation, of course, of church and state, which did not exist in those days. So his uh, ancestor, his great-grandfather, was Judge Hathorne, and to separate himself from that event, Nathaniel Hawthorne added a W to his name, a W, a single letter, a small little um, expression, a little token of his um, attempt to separate himself from his grandfather, his great-grandfather. And then he wrote a book called The Scarlet Letter. Hmm. Now, you might think, Scarlet Letter, also about a single letter, a single letter. I'm sure there's a, uh, I'm sure there's a topic there, a writing topic we could talk about, we could write, I'll think about it, give you guys an assignment to correlate the fact that he wrote The Scarlet Letter about a single letter, and he added a single letter to his last name. To separate himself from the events of the Salem witch trials. So he wrote the Scarlet Letter in order to reveal this intolerance of this Puritan society to show that they lacked justice. And he wanted to separate himself from that destructiveness, that attitude, that intolerance. And also the idea of redemption, the idea of earning back the respect of society, earning back the respect of those who might have judged you harshly, but through your own hard work, through your own perseverance and tenacity, you earn back their respect. It's also a book about hidden sin and guilt and punishment and how People deal differently with these different types of, um, you know, these different personalities. They, we all deal differently with guilt. Some of us carry it and we own it and we earn back the respect of those who might have judged us originally. And others keep it a secret and hide it from, um, from others. So the, basically the book is about guilt. There is, when we look at the story, we're, we're brought into the sort of the middle of the story, and there's a backstory that is slowly revealed in little pieces about what happened before the events of chapter 1 and 2 and 3, and how these characters deal with the central idea of guilt. So we have our main character, Hester. Hester is the main character, the hero of the story. You might call her a heroine. I honestly don't like using that term in class because students kind of laugh and snicker at the term heroine. They, oh, it's a drug, right? But 
heroine just simply means a female hero. So sometimes I'll say she's a hero or a shero, and she's our main character. She's the one who, um, well, see, I'm starting to give away too much information, but she's our main character, okay? And she has a daughter. Starts out as a little baby. She's holding in her hands, in her arms in chapter two and three, and then that baby, Pearl, um, turns into a toddler and gets older and older. Another character dealing with guilt is Dimsdale, Arthur Dimsdale, who is the reverend. She, he is the um, the reverend, the uh, pastor of the church that Hester attends. And he has this peculiar habit of putting his hand over his heart when he's speaking and looking pain like he's in pain and suffering. And he's, he's, um, he's in pain, he's suffering, he's... Um, fading he's just everyone's all his um, church members are concerned that he is sick and he's just not doing well and then we have another main character named Chillingworth Chillingworth he is ugh, I don't want to give too much away but he's our antagonist here he he's our main antagonist of the story and something that's interesting here that I do need to talk about is that in uh, the, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, the names that he chooses for these characters, all the names mean something. They mean something. Hester, okay, or Shiro, right? Hester is from Greek. It's It means star. It's related to the word astro, if you kind of think about it in, uh, in Latin, okay? But it's a Greek word for star. She's a star. She's a shooting star, a falling star, uh, a fading star. What is she? Well, I'll leave that up to you. But the name means the name means star. Pearl, on the other hand, Pearl is a something that's precious. Pearl, her daughter, something that's precious, something that's actually born out of an irritant. Right? Pearl comes from a grain of sand, and from that grain of sand, this little irritant comes something beautiful and precious. Dimsdale. If you look at Dimsdale, you think dimming, fading, something that is fading, it's dimming, the light is fading away. And like I said, he puts his hand over his heart. This is a gesture you will see throughout the entire book of Dimsdale, Arthur Dimsdale, putting his hand over his heart. Uh, the last character is Chillingworth. Chillingworth, by the way, is not his real name. We'll figure that out later. But the name Chillingworth, it's chilling, it's scary, it sends a chill down your spine. That's what the name sort of implies. He's a scary character. So I'll tell you this much, he is the antagonist of the story. So we're going to go on through. Make sure you download the vocabulary guide. It's on the haiku page. Also view the various um, abridged version uh, chapters uh, of the Scarlet Letter. I've got them on the haiku page as well, so you can read and understand the overall um, storyline. I want you to make sure you understand that because it's a very complex story, as we just discovered today with a very elevated diction and syntax. And we will also be looking at uh, some of the passages a little more in depth. All right, so... We will talk to you soon and go ahead and get started on the Scarlet Letter.